This is Ms. Bomi again. I am back with another recipe. Tonight I am going to do my version of uh, nachos for me and the kitchen bitch. Oh yeah? This time? I can't prepare it. Mojito. Oh, no, Mine's better. I'm gonna start off by saying cheers. All right. Now that I have wet in my whistle, we can get started here. Um, in the pan, as you can see, <clears throat> I'm browning about a pound, a pound and a half of um, ground beef. Just getting that all nice and brown and chopped up really fine here. That's about a pound and a half of ground beef. I've also got like a quarter of an onion and kitchen bitch. I can't, I can't even tell you what he's doing off camera. It's just, oh. Um, some refried beans. It's really starting to miss Chris from a lawnmower company. <laughs> and I've also got some Velveeta cheese that I cubed uh, about three thick slices and some olives. I also have some shredded cheese and also lettuce but I kept that in the fridge because it's extremely hot in the kitchen and I just don't want it wilting and then your variety of, of, of salsas whatever you like um, the paste picante sauce is going to go with the Velveeta cheese and I'll show you how I mix that together in just a bit so that's basically the ingredients pretty simple pretty easy to make making uh, two different little versions one is mine and one is kitchen bitches. So I'm going to start spreading some taco seasoning, homemade taco seasoning. I like this taco seasoning because for people who have migraines such as myself, you kind of have to watch like uh, how much MSG intake that you have. So um, making your own combination for the taco seasoning is pretty awesome. It does. It tastes, I think, better than most of the packet stuff that you can that you can and will find in the stores. And to that, I'm going to add about a quarter cup of water just to make sure that this stays moist, so that taco seasoning can incorporate it into the ground beef. <clears throat> If you want, uh, you can uh, put the uh, recipe for the uh, taco seasoning in the description box. Yeah, I can put the description for how to make the taco seasoning in my, in my box there. So in case anybody's interested. And basically you just, you know, add to, uh, add to taste. And at this time too, I like to go ahead and add some onions into my mix and you know if you don't like onions or you can't eat onions then just don't have them While that's going ahead and cooking, I'm arranging here. I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, my um, my version of my sauce that I like to use, which is the Velveeta cheese that I showed you that was cubed up top, down low. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and start melting this in the microwave. Very simple, simple. <coughs> We 
guys should be able to handle this one. Quickly just get my hands a rinse here. has started to melt a bit. So I'm just going to give this a stir. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and add um, some of the paste picante sauce. And you can get different kinds. You can get mild, medium, or hot depending upon you know your taste buds. Put about at least a quarter of the container into the bowl. Kind of start to mix it up. I know it's going to look kind of gross for a minute but once you get it in the microwave, put it in there for a few minutes, it comes out nice. And you can use this dip by itself if you wanted to with your nacho chips, or I like to incorporate it with my nachos. That's what I'm planning to do with, with mine this evening. So I'm gonna zap this back in the microwave for a couple more minutes. Probably about two minutes should do the trick. Let's see how we're ground beef is coming. It smells delish. It has smell vision. Anything that smell vision. Of course if you cook something really wrong, <laughs> that would not uh, go over very well, would it? <laughs> I have to open up my cover here. Sorry about that. Over there. I'm going to grab some chips. You can use any kind of um, chips that you want. I, I like to use the little round ones. And when I put my nachos together, I like to not try to overdo it because you want to make sure that you're able to taste everything that you're building onto the nachos. I'm just going to finish this up. I'll be back in just a minute and then we'll uh, start building some nachos. Two snaps back. Cheers. Okay, I'm back. I just took this out of the microwave and as you can see, I need to kind of stir this up a little bit better so that things will come together nicely. And as you can see, it makes kind of like a cheesy salsa sauce. I think you can find this recipe either on Velveeta or through Case. I'm not sure which, but I'm sure it's probably online. If anybody's interested. So I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the way. Alright, so for the first version, let me get a plate. take and spread my chips kind of evenly on the bottom of the plate and it's fine if some of them <clears throat> overlap one another. Usually I do a small plate but just so that you get the idea I am doing a large one and don't think that I'm like a piggy and eat like this all the time. This is just for demonstration purposes only. Okay with that being said here we go. So First thing I like to do is incorporate my cheese salsa sauce on here and just kind of take a little and put it on here, drizzle it kind of all around, get most of the chips, get a little, try to get a little bit on each of the chips. Okay. 
nice stuff about this is if you have extra, it, it's good. You can put it in the refrigerator and um, use it again like tomorrow or something. If you can stand doing not just two days in a row. Which I can't imagine most people would not because it seems to be like everybody's favorite thing to eat. Okay, there we go. And then um, from there, I like to take my ground beef and add some of that. Try to get some all over the chips, which I think is kind of tricky to do at times. It's like one of those things, either you're, you're, you're right on and you get it and it looks great or not so. to make sure that that doesn't stick. And um, the things that I have in the fridge, like I said, were the lettuce because I didn't want to leave it out because it's so warm in here today. And then um, sour cream too. Yeah, you can trade your own lettuce if you want. I just bought a bag at the store because I'm lazy and I wanted to do this quickly this evening. <clears throat> Cut that open and ready to go. And I like to add my shredded cheese on top of my hot meat because then that kind of helps to melt the cheese a little bit. No comments from the peanut gallery. I don't know what the hell you people are thinking. Hot meat. Yeah, hot meat. I'm sure I'll never hear the end of that one. Because like on that last um, video that I did, talking about my cock and my pecker, people were making comments. And I need to correct if it's not pecker, it was a beet. There we go. So make sure you put some cheese on there. I like to add a little lettuce. And the toppings can vary, you know. Put uh, whatever you like on there, whatever works for you, whatever you think is going to taste fabulous when it all comes together. There we go. Okay. And I like to add some black olives. If you want something with a little bit more kick, you can also add some jalapenos. These are chopped black olives. I'm on your channel right now. Yeah. You've actually done a video on this. I did? No. <sighs> Keep it up and I'll cut your ass. <clears throat> and the last thing I need to do is just top this off with some sour cream. Kind of give that a little bit of a stir. I like to add a couple olives right on top of there, just to make it decorative. There you go. That's version one of nachos. Up high. Down below. Hope you can see that. That should be a better shot if I can keep my hands steady long enough. Okay. Alright. Now we're going to do Ebomi's version. which entails um, some refried greens that I'll heat up in the microwave in about a minute or so. And while that's heating up in the microwave, it's that same process that we did last time. I'm going to go ahead and put some chips on the plate. Like I said, you can use whatever kind of chips that you want. I happen to like the round ones. Personal preference, you know, make whatever. No big deal. Got my hands there. And with his, I like to put some ground beef on there first. I'm trying to get this to spread pretty evenly, but. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and add some shredded cheese to his. And being that the meat is still warm, it should help melt the cheese. Oh, Michelle, we call it some freebie cheese. A little bit sloppy there, huh, Shelves? Alright, pull this out of the microwave, go ahead and move that over. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and add some refried beans to this. I like to just do a dollop in the middle. A couple big dollops. These are good, but yeah, they're so open messy. Um, and um, he's got two jars here. This one is Mrs. In Refernos. It's a gourmet salsa that they make in um, Fort Worth, Texas. I guess it's hot, hot, hot. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that. And I think to be on the safe side. spoon and just uh, drizzle a little bit around there, a little bit on the refried beans. Have you tried this? Do you know how hot the hot, hot this stuff is? Very. Very? In that case I'll add more. <laughs> Kidding. And then his regular is Paul Newman's brown. Um, and every time that you purchase some Paul Newman salsa, um, the profits go to charity, in case anybody is interested. It's also so. a very good salsa, and I'm very meticulous on my salsa. I know you're very meticulous on your salsa. Here we go. And on top of that, we'll add a little bit of lettuce. some black olives. We don't eat jalapenos on his because he opted for the freaking hot sauce. And there went an olive. Develop a solid cream. And just a pinch more cheese for a little bit of additional color. <clears throat> and there you have it. Salsa. Hot and regular. The Bomi's version. And Ms. Bomi's version. So there you have it. Nachos. Simple, easy, quick to do. And like I said, you can use just about any kind of toppings that uh, that you want. Again, really. Okay. Uh -huh. Cheers. Again, really. So there you have it. Nachos. I hope that uh, give it a try. Come up with your own version and uh, see how it tastes. So there you have it. Simple, easy, and quick. So this is Miss Bomi saying good night and good eats. Did you want this one on? What? <laughs> Stop doing that to me. Hi, this is Miss Bomi again. As you can see, kitchen bitch got into my McCarty mojito and finished it off on me. I wish he'd just stick to his own dang beer. Anyways, I forgot uh, earlier in my video, so I just wanted to say this now. 
I wanted to go ahead and give a shout out to some people who commented on my last video of my chicken mozzarella um, and like liked it very much that people you know do leave really funny and positive comments and so I just wanted to say thanks and I hope that everybody will um, continue that because it's really kind of fun doing that interaction so I just wanted to say a thank you and give a shout out to each one of these channels uh, the first one that I want to give a shout out to is Blessed Cajun's channel um, he was the one that made the bracelets they're really really awesome thank you again um, the second one is NSZ85 he has a pretty cool channel. You should go check his out. And the third one, I'm hoping I'm saying this right. And if I'm not, I really apologize. C CTU Agent 247. So those are my three shout outs. And I just wanted to say um, thanks very much for watching my videos and leaving the comments as well. So, boys and girls, this is Miss Bomi saying good night, good eats, wherever you are.